Holy crap, hold on, hold on, hold on, how fast are we going? 38, 39, 40, 40 miles an hour on the Rev 1? Are you kidding me? Alright guys, like, I didn't know we were going to start the video off like that with almost getting killed, but I want to pull off to the side real quick because I got a new accessory for this and it's a storage container down here, so let's check it out. All right, check this out, guys. The Ride One Up Rev One. I know I just said that in the video, but hey, this is a nice name for the bike. It's beautiful. It is probably the top bike I have been on for a moped style e bike. And I'm surprised because this is the first one that Ride One Up has came out with in their line of a bike. So they normally do like mountain bike style uh, e bikes. So this is fantastic. Now this one has a storage container right here. There's not many videos out on it yet because it's brand new because they've been sold out, but this thing is cool. Now I was thinking when I did my review video that you wouldn't be able to fit a battery in here and have a storage container, but no, you can fit a battery in here and have the storage container and fit a little bit of stuff around the side of the battery and on top. Like obviously you're gonna lose a lot of your room, but that is super cool. And I'm not hearing this thing rattle around. I don't hear anything going on like weird about it. I do think that it is ever so slightly like curved down. I would have liked to seen it kind of go up a little bit because there's a lot more room right here than down here. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. I'm gonna take this bike to work like we always do on all our e-bike reviews. Then we're gonna see how the light is, the tail light, all that kind of stuff, which the tail light and headlight are on right now, which it's daytime running light. And then you have a little brake light right there. The daytime running light stays on 24 seven when the bike is on, there's no way to turn that off. But we're gonna try to turn signals out tonight and all this kind of stuff. Let's get on the bike, let's take it to work, let's have a good time and talk about this bike. Now, if you guys have seen my review video on this bike, you would have saw that I gave this bike a 9.5 out of 10 out of everything. That's based on the quality of how the bike feels, the speed, power, headlight, brake light, the pricing, all that kind of stuff. This is a phenomenal moped style e-bike. And that's where my rating stands at is for a moped style e-bike. Not to be confused with other bikes out in the market. This is just, for its class, this thing is just outstanding. There's really nothing else I could say about it. The only thing I've noticed, to me, it's really hard to hit top speed most of the time. But then when it does want to hit top speed, it just keeps going and going and going. But I feel like I've noticed that my average speed on this bike is about 30 miles an hour. And look, I'm maxed out. Like, yeah, it's a little windy and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm only doing 30. I would expect this bike to just go to like 36 or 37 like every single time. But it just doesn't. So that's just something that I noticed. And then if you are on the heavier side, because I'm 160 pounds, you might not be having the same type of torque because this bike has like 95 Newton meters of torque. And then you might not be getting the top speed out of it, you know, based on your weight. So just keep in mind, I'm 160 pounds while I ride this bike. And as the battery bars go down, that gives you a little bit of uh, understanding on how we got our range as well. I'm not gonna be using the pedals at all. Holy crap. Oh my God, let's not get a flat over here. I'm not gonna be, ooh, the Lucid. A lucid oh that thing's clean i almost ran into it because i was looking at it too much god <laughs> that car is so clean i'd get that or a tesla but um we're gonna see what type of range we get i've only barely left the house and we're already down one battery bar i just feel like that's so weird that this happens all the time this happened on my review video too i went like two miles and all of a sudden the battery was down so i don't know it's weird the 20 amp hour battery, I would expect to get like five miles or six miles for every single battery bar on here, but it just doesn't. That first battery bar just disappears within the first like two miles. It's very odd to me. Now, as I sit and wait for all this damn traffic coming by, um, I actually never got to try the horn out when we did our review video. I totally blanked out and totally forgot. So let's see. All right, that's not a bad horn. I would prefer like an actual horn instead of like a noise coming from the headlight because I believe that's where the horn's at. It's integrated into the back of the headlight. So I'm gonna hear it a lot louder than someone else that would hear it that's in front of me. All right, I'm going for it. Go, go, go. Hey, they fixed that patch in the road. I hit that the last time when we rode a bike through here. All right, way to go Fresno. All right, let's take some turns. Nice and smooth. Now these tires aren't as smooth as the C3 Strom because these are like a multi-purpose. You know, you can go off-roading. You could be in the street with them. You kind of do a lot of stuff with these tires. 
Now the C3 Strom is just purely street tires. All right, what's this guy doing? And um, they, the C3 Strom feels so good on the road, but when you take it off-road, it doesn't feel that great. So I can see why they went with a tire like this, and honestly, I'm not complaining. I'm not too worried about getting a flat on these tires whatsoever. They're pretty thick. They're not those Ching Lee tires that come on all these e-bikes that we review. These are very decently good tires. Now, if you really want to step it up and not have to worry about a flat at all, go and get some motorcycle tires like some Shinkos, and then you'll never have a flat, really. I mean, not to say you'll never completely have a flat, but you'll probably like 98% never get a flat on one of these bikes unless you get a straight ass nail in there. And it's pretty nice, but the bad thing about motorcycle tires is they're pretty heavy. So just keep that in mind and you're gonna lose some range and some torque as well. Whoa, the brakes work so good. I actually didn't even need to brake that soon. It started braking way before I even got up to the light. Come on, people, let's go. Rev one wants to go hella fast. Let's go, let's go. Now I'm still getting this jerkiness feeling from like zero to like four or zero to five miles per hour where I full throttle it and the bike takes off and then for just like maybe a quarter of a second, probably not even that long, it just like maybe a tenth of a second, it just kind of like pulls back power for that ever so slight moment and then it keeps going. And it's a very weird feeling. It, it doesn't feel like anything's wrong with the bike. It's just, I don't know if that's how like the controller's kicking on. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't feel that in the C3 Strong, but I'm assuming that has to have the same issue because they're both the same power system. Like everything about those bikes, they're like completely the same. And as I was telling you guys about the speed, if you guys can see the display, uh, let me see if I can bend it up a little bit. There you go. Uh, 30 miles an hour. I would expect on this road, I'd be doing like 36 miles an hour. So I'm not always hitting top speed on this bike. I don't know if it's like a heat issue, but now look, now it's just randomly like picking up speed. Now we're doing 33 miles an hour. So I don't know. I, I don't know what that's about. But regardless, this bike does hit top speed. It just doesn't want to do it every single time you want to go that fast. I can jump on my Super 73 and it will always do 50 miles an hour every single time, all the time. I can jump on my Suron, it will always like do like easily 60 all the time. This bike just full out for minutes at a time, it just does not want to hit that top speed. Another thing I want to mention too is as I'm riding this and going over these bumps that you probably can't tell because the GoPro has good stabilization in it, is the fact that I have all my suspension like to the softest setting possible. I actually feel like the back is a little bit too soft and the front is a little bit more stiff and I do have the front like adjusted all the way down completely. So the compression on here is on the softest setting ever. The preload is on the softest, which I totally forgot to mention that in my review video as well. So you have all these adjustments in the front so you can change that. Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. There's the guy not paying attention. That's what sucks about being a bike, man. People just riding the bike lane. Gotta be careful. All right, so let's see how this bike is to come uphill really quick. I am actually surprised that it's only doing 24 miles an hour. Like that is still great for going over an overpass. I'm not trying to talk shit on the bike. That's actually really good, not 24 miles an hour. I actually just expected it to be a little tiny bit better because the top speed is, you know, like 36, 37 miles an hour. But it's still not bad. It's better than most bikes that have been out there. It was struggling ever so slightly, but it wasn't like where I felt it like bogging down to the point where it was like really just losing like mile per hour over and over and over. It was actually doing a pretty decent job. So now that we're going downhill, let's see how it does. After like 33 miles an hour when the motor really starts making noise. Let's see if we can make this light. 36, almost 37. Come on, we can make it. We can make it. I'm going through it. I'm going through it. Wait for me. Don't run me over, people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think I'll get a ticket on an e-bike. I mean, maybe some places you might, but around here, you don't really get messed around with too much. As long as you're not being a straight-up idiot on one of these bikes and causing traffic issues and stuff like that, you should be perfectly fine. Which is another thing, too, to talk about this bike. This bike does not look like an e-bike. So maybe depending on where you're at maybe you know there's like huge regulations on these bikes but i want to know what a cop would think about this bike like straight up honest like i'm just curious like if i run into a cop i would love to ask them like it's not going to happen in this video but i would just love to see what they say because this is such a cool looking bike 
I could see a cop really being like, hey, I mean, it is a bike. It does have pedals on it. Like, how fast does it go? And probably tell them and they'd be like, hey, man, just make sure you keep, you know, the speed at 28 miles an hour under on the road. But if you're off road and stuff like that, maybe on something like this, you can go a little bit faster. But I don't know. I'm just curious on what they would say. But this is a phenomenal looking bike. It feels just like buying a Super 73. They actually, I'll tell you this. It feels better than owning a Super 73. It goes faster. Hopefully you don't have to worry about the motor because Super 73's had uh, motor issues and stuff like that with the gears going out. So hopefully you don't have that issue on this bike. But this bike goes faster. It's softer. The seat feels so good. The Super 73 seat is just flat and it doesn't feel that great. It looks more low profile and stuff like that. It looks cooler and it has a hump in the back, which I like. But this has turn signals. I mean, it has a better power display. It picks up, it gets up heels better. It's just overall just better. And it's more than half the price of an RX Super 73. Like what the heck? Like look, look how easy that is to go from a transition from being on the sidewalk or a bike trail and then going onto the street. Like from a sidewalk to a street, I should say. It was honestly just flawless. Like I didn't feel anything. Now I know a lot of people are gonna replace this seat, you know, to have a customized seat and stuff like that, but you do not need to do that on this bike. Don't waste your money because this is a comfortable seat. Don't think you have to do any upgrades to this bike. The only thing I would suggest you guys getting if you own one of these, get a mirror for this side. You don't need a mirror for both sides because you're going to be riding the bike lane for 95% of your time, but I would put a mirror on this side. Holy crap. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How fast are we going? 38, 39, 40, 40 miles an hour on the Rev 1? Are you kidding me? 40 miles an hour, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I'm almost going as fast as traffic on a 50 mile an hour road. <laughs> yeah let's go oh my god and we're still only down one battery bar that first battery bar just absolutely just went on that first mile which is super weird and i think i'm gonna have to uh break it to you guys but the mileage on this bike 100 percent off the total distance it says we have on this bike is 11 miles and it says we only did three miles today which is absolute crap. I've done way more than that. My work is 6.5 to 7 miles away from my house. I've said this many times if you guys are new to the channel. It only says we did 3 miles. That's that's horrible. That's like 50% off from what it's actually supposed to be. So I'm kind of disappointed in that. I wonder if there's a way to adjust that because now when I ride this bike, I don't know the accurate range that I'm getting out of this battery. Huh. Super interesting. All right, so the back's open, so I'm going to go through that way, but I thought I would just ride it just a little bit. I was going to try to do some uh, top speed over here, but this uh, Challenger in front of me it messed that up. So we're just going to head back, get into work, set up the bike, and then we are going to see you guys at nighttime. What's up, Bob? Hey, what's up, Jesse? What's up, man? <laughs> I was trying to get these tires to lock. Oh, I guess they did lock up. It didn't feel like they locked up, but I was trying to slam on the brakes. <laughs> oh man. All right. So I'm going to have to do the mileage myself now that I know that information and maybe I'll pick up some stuff on the way home. I wonder if milk will fit in here. I think it will, but I'm worried about it like busting open with the cap since it's going to have to probably be sideways because milk is probably taller than that. But I might buy some groceries and we could throw some stuff in this basket and see how it is. And then um, we'll do some more videos on this bike after obviously this video is done. I might do some stuff where I put an extra battery on here. We do a long like trip and stuff and we switch batteries and whatnot. But anyways, I'll see you guys at night. We'll check out this nice brake light, which you already tell is super bright and the headlight. We'll check that out in a bit. So see you guys in one second. All right, guys, it's been 10 hours for me, but only like five seconds for you guys. All right, we'll ride this bike in the store, you know, just a little bit. We on? All right, it takes a little bit for the display and everything to come up, but it is cool because it always starts you on your last, like a pedal assist, whatever you're on. I like that. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, man. All right. See you uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be here. All right. Later, man. All right, let's pull over here real quick. 
I want to show you how some of this stuff looks. I've been waiting to ride this bike at night and finally the day has come. Now the bike isn't too, too long. So I, got, I can show you guys a little bit of the brake light. Not too bad. I can't really get fully behind the bike while hitting the brakes, but they get brighter when you do uh, hit the brake levers and it doesn't matter if you use the left side or the right side, they work for both. It looks super badass. And check this out. So if you guys pick up this storage container, I know this video is going to be pretty popular because no one's been showing this yet, but I got some milk in here. Hopefully nothing bad happens to the milk. Cause I mean, even though this is a very comfortable ride, it's still going to like, you know, kind of shake up and down just a little bit, but I put some stuff behind it. Also some like snacks and cookies that I have. So this is like legit. The fact that I could probably fit like two milks in there, that's pretty nice. But if I did put a battery in there, then I'd be limited to only probably putting this bag in here and I'd have to kind of, uh, you know, spread it out a little bit, but this is cool. Now, another thing this bike comes with, we talked about has turn signals. So this is how the turn signal looks in the front. They're super nice. The only thing I wish is that they weren't chrome. I wish they were kind of black. So they kind of blended in with the bike because the bike is such like a clean look, but maybe they made them chrome behind there because made it, maybe it made the light brighter. That's what I'm thinking anyway, but it looks sick. These are definitely noticeable. Like if you are actually braking, people are going to know that you're, uh, you're braking and turning is what I'm trying to say. It's super cool. I like it, but, um, let's get our headlight on. You just have to hit this button comes on. Uh, yeah. So it showed up on the screen. If you guys can see that. So now the actual regular headlight should be on dope. Yeah. All right. So let's get on the way. Let's check all these lights. I'm so excited. And the fact that I was able to bring milk to the house without having to put it in my backpack, which it wouldn't have fit anyway. One of the best headlights in the game, I will say, hands down, an awesome headlight for an e-bike. This is basically like a car projector. You guys can see how the line when I turn it has a clear cut like line straight across, just like a brand new car has. I love it. Absolutely fantastic. All right, let's get across the way. Something is in the middle of my bike lane. What the heck is that? You guys can see this? What is that? Oh, okay, no, that's just too like a tree or something. All right, let's see if we can uh, beat that traffic before they uh, catch up to us. So we'll see. I'm gonna try to make it though. Man, look at this headlight, guys. Look at this shit. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have cussed, my bad. Probably gonna get demonetized. <laughs> Gotta make that YouTube money, but dude, this is nice. Look, I can see whatever the heck this box is. Woo! Get out of the way of that thing. This is, this is a badass headlight, guys. Wow. I'm 100% I'm giving this headlight probably like a, like a 9.5 out of 10, guys. Like, look how wide it is. I can see all the way across the lanes over here. I know it's only two lane, but that is impressive. I can see all the way over here and it is absolutely bright. And I do have it going out, you know, ever so slightly farther, um, just so I can see more of the road. And it's handling it very well. If I want to make it a little bit brighter in front of me, I just have to move the headlight down. But that is like absolutely fantastic. All right, now let's see if uh, I made it before this traffic comes. Cool. So I'm gonna get in the road. We're gonna come this way. I don't think we're gonna make the green light though. Are we? Come on. Come on, bike, go. Oh, we're making it. Holy shit. Oh, I'm cussing again. Damn it. <laughs> Demonetized right there. <laughs> YouTube's not happy. <laughs> Whoa, man, I can see everything. If you guys do not follow my channel, you will understand that these bikes are absolutely atrocious when it comes to having these headlights on and you cannot see anything over here. You can't see anything over here unless you turn the high beam on. I don't even have the high beam on yet. So let's turn on the high beam and see how that looks. Okay, all right, that's totally different. <laughs> um, all right, I'm not exactly sure how to feel about the high beam. So that's very odd. So if I go down this way, I love how this looks. I don't even think you need the high beam. Look at that, that distance on how the, the light just goes straight, just like a car headlight would be, like a brand new car with projectors on it. Not the halogen bulbs or nothing like that with the old like, housings and stuff like that. These are like all the new like 2010 cars and up. But when you do hit the high beams, you lose all the light from the side like you get a little bit of bounced off light over here and then like right over here but it's just completely straight and yes i can see very far 
but I like this better. I don't actually need to see all the way down there. I'd rather see more of the side. So that is pretty cool. Let's see how this looks in complete darkness while uh, everyone's probably like checking me out, wondering what the heck I'm doing. But this is a fantastic brake light. It's probably blinding the camera right now. I don't know if the ISO is changing on the GoPro to uh, make up for how bright that light is, but a fantastic brake light, guys. I'll do a little quick walk around of the bike. Damn, I'm like blinded. If I saw this coming towards me, I wouldn't know what the heck it is. I would not think this is an e-bike. <laughs> Ooh, a GTR. Oh, Skyline GTR. Oh, I like those things. All right, let's get on the way and go. I'm gonna turn my helmet lights on. You guys might see the reflection um, in this display over here. There we go. You guys can see that uh, reflection right there? Hell yeah. All right, I just like turning these things on because uh, people check them out. Oh. Oh, I got to put the kickstand up. I'm trying to kick it. There we go. I got the kickstand up. <laughs> That's something I always forget to do on these bikes. I have no idea, but I should probably hurry up and get home because I got milk that I had in this basket for probably 20 minutes before I actually clocked out of work because I had to get all my stuff together and I want to make sure I made it out on time. So uh, we got to make sure this milk don't go bad. But man, I'm loving this bike. I think this bike is like the perfect candidate for doing a 72 volt system on. Like just like the Super 73, I really believe that. Now I want to take the basket off and I want to take the, the bottom cover off down here that has the wiring and all that stuff to the rear motor. And I want to see what connection is. I'm not exactly sure yet. We'll probably do a lot more videos on this bike because I do plan on keeping it. I was debating on which bike I wanted to keep when uh, I got this one in, but I definitely think I'm going to be keeping this one over the C3 Strom. I'll make one more video on the C3 Strom just because it's a it's a gorgeous bike. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a good bike if you want to pedal compared to this one. They have the exact same like power management system, so you're getting the same exact speed and torque and all that kind of stuff. They weigh the same, like 93 pounds or somewhere around there. So they're basically pretty much identical, but I feel like this one has more room for activity on the inside where you can put a bigger motor in the back, put a big battery down there with a different controller, whatever you can fit. But I'm curious to know if this connection is a L1019. I think that's what it is. Um, if it is, which that's a Bafang connection, and this motor is a Bafang, but they do have different connectors, so we have to look into it one of these days. I can put my phase runner that I have on my Zeus on this, and we can run the stock motor and the stock battery, and we can see if we could pump even more mile per hour out of this bike. And if we can't for whatever reason, then okay, like we can't. I'll wait for all these cars, hold up. But um, you can do a 72 volt battery at that point in time. So that's what I'm actually curious to know is if it's the same connection, I will pull it off of my Zeus. I don't care if I don't use my Zeus e-bike and we'll see if we can put the 72 volt battery on here and I'll just put it somewhere in here. I'll see if it fits in the storage container and we'll just slap it in there, connect all the wires and do 72 volt without changing the rear motor. And if it's a bike that seems hella fun to go faster on, like 45 plus or even just 40 flat out, all the time, all the like, all the time, every time, instead of like just doing 30 like it was doing earlier, and then sometimes it goes to 37. If we can always do 40 on this bike wherever we're at, even if we have wind coming towards us, that would be freaking awesome. So trust me, I'm not gonna toot my own horn and say, hey, we're gonna do it, but I really wanna do it. We're just gonna have to figure it out on uh, what we do. But I really, really wanna do it, man. I need to find out what the dropouts are for this rear motor and what fits. Even if we can only fit like a 3000 watt motor on this thing, man, I would love to see this thing be doing like 45, 50. Like right now, like this feels so smooth. This is absolutely smooth as hell doing 37, 38 miles an hour. Now I wouldn't come around this super fast. I would probably definitely change the tires as well. If I'm going to like be going that fast, I'd probably put motorcycle tires on this thing or something. I also think what I'm going to do is if I can find a setting in this bike to change the the cadence like sensor like for pedaling you know how like how fast the sensor kicks on i might actually just turn that off or turn it to the highest setting so it doesn't really kick on with the pedals because i'm never using the pedals on this bike it's kind of garbage and uh real quick update as i've been rambling on you know having a good ass time uh we went down one other battery bar i would say we did about seven miles to work and so far we probably did like another two miles so far i would i want to say maybe almost three i think I like two though so uh that's where we're at, down back two battery bars. It's not too bad at all. I mean, it's just weird that that first battery bar goes in the first mile or two. It's just very odd to me. But um, 
I never showed you guys in my review video how fast this bike is with uh, pedaling, and I actually don't even know. So let me let off, because I know the throttle is very responsive. Let me try the throttle real quick. So one, two, three, go. It's like maybe almost half a second, if that. It's actually very responsive. I'd say like half a second to be on the realistic side. The pedals, on the other hand, let's see. Oh, dude, the pedals are exactly the same as the throttle. That's very nice. But I just don't want to pedal this bike. So we're probably going to go into settings and turn that off. Maybe I'll show you guys one of these days. I really don't know like anything about the settings. Can you go into the settings while you're riding? Oh, that would be nice. I was trying to hold the M button to see if I can get into the custom settings, but no, it doesn't let me. So I'm uh, pedaling and using the throttle. And now we're like holding like 34 miles per hour. Let's see if I stop pedaling. Okay, so we're just holding 34 miles an hour, which is a very solid speed for this bike. I'm not hating. Woo. And again, guys, do not forget that I have a coupon code that saves you $50 off this bike. And I know it's not a lot, but Ride One Up doesn't give people coupons. I think they gave me a coupon and Shreddy a coupon. And I love Shreddy to death. So like whatever channel you like the most, I really don't care. Um, I know Shreddy had a lot of luck. He got his bike for free. So, I mean, I would really appreciate it if you guys, you know, use my code. Cause I actually had to buy this bike myself and it would help my channel out and help me recoup some of the money to make reviews for you. But um, it's code like MR uh, underscore Rev1, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, something like that. No, I'm sorry. It's Rev, R-E-V-V underscore M-R-C-D, I think. <laughs> I don't know, I'll put it on the screen. But yeah, um, this is worth every penny. Absolutely worth every penny. And a lot of people keep saying, hey, I should buy the, the non-suspension version because it's a huge difference. I don't care about having rear suspension, but you guys gotta think. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think that bike has a 15 amp hour battery and then this one obviously has a 20 amp hour battery and then it's also the non-suspension version is shorter and it also has a different controller which has less amps in it. So you're definitely gonna want this if you want the speed. It's not gonna be the same. Woo, that's a bumpy section that I do on my videos and I will say it is not the best going over that and, but I will say before I left work I did adjust the suspension in the back. I made the front softer. I made the back a little bit harder and I'm definitely noticing it right now so I might loosen up the back again but I love this air shock. I don't know how a lot of people feel about it but this air shock is badass. I'm loving it so far. Everyone's checking out my helmet. Hey what's up guys? I'm on the best e-bike of 2023 guys. Look at me, check it out in all its glory with a storage basket on the bottom. I got milk. We hanging out out here. We having a good ass time. Yeah, I love this bike guys. I really think uh, if I was some companies out there, I would start making some uh, enclosures. I actually should reach out to a uh, custom e-bike and see if they want to do a collab together where um, they piece together one of these kits and uh, maybe I could be one of the people to uh, first get it, kind of go over some uh, pros and cons about the thing, maybe give them some feedback and we can have a 72 volt bike with a bigger motor in the back. But let's just see in one of these other videos, I'll take this bike apart and see what the connection looks like. And if we can really hook up a phase runner, man, it's game over. I will rip apart my Zeus bike. <laughs> and then the cool thing is, the phase runner is so small, it's not very powerful. It's not like a Sabaton controller. So you're not gonna be able to put an aftermarket um, motor in the back that has three phase wires because this uses one connection in the back. And I would hope that Bafang has it wired up correctly. I mean, they should. Um, so it works with the, the phase runner correctly so you get all the hall sensors and it reads everything. Unlike my Zeus, my Zeus does not read them all. But you could put a 72 volt battery right here that slides on top and then you could probably have one right in the middle and you have a big one. So you could have two batteries with that phase runner. That would be absolutely insane. I could see people putting um, controllers right here on the top as well because you can mount something and maybe even zip tie the ends or something. I don't know. There's so much stuff you can do with this bike and it is absolutely fantastic. I'm loving it. Ride One Up is doing some good stuff. I can't recommend it enough, guys. And since... We are almost at the end of the video. I will let you know when we get back. We will probably do roughly, oh shit, is that the police? That's the police. That's the police. 
go car go why are you taking so long bro just because the police are there man doesn't mean you go like so damn slow man people are so afraid of the police like, they took them forever to turn what the heck <laughs> it's a four-way stop i was gonna stop anyway and i'm in the bike lane anyways we're gonna do roughly like 13 to 14 miles and i just want to see what the battery indicator is going to be but i really think it's just going to stay at those two bars i don't think we're going to lose another one by the time i get home but you never know but one thing i would love to really do to this bike the way it sits right now since i ride in the street 24 7 is put some street tires on like some kinda tires the same one that came on the c3 strom i think that's something i would want to do and really quick i know there's going to be talking a little bit of crap on the bike but one thing you have to notice well, one thing you're gonna know, I'm sorry, when you're riding this bike is the pedals give you a ton of vibration because that chain is so damn tight. I can feel the motor vibration, I can feel everything. And with the pedals being so, the chain being so tight on the pedals, it just sucks. Like, it just feels weird. I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't feel right. So um, that's my only biggest complaint. I don't really care that it has no gears. I don't really think anyone's complaining that it doesn't have gears. Um, it has enough power to get up stuff, but if you really want to pedal, just don't buy this bike. Get the C3 Strom or wait until the C3 Strom comes out with their new bike that's going to have suspension. And I'm curious to see what type of power system that's going to have. But anyways, we're almost home. Let me uh, check it out when we get to the house. All right, guys. Yeah, we didn't go down any more battery bars. We just went down two for about roughly almost 14 miles. So, uh not bad guys not bad at all i really think this bike is gonna give you I'm sorry. what what is my watch doing <laughs> i really think this bike is gonna give you realistically i'm not trying to make up any numbers here but um i want to say realistically you're gonna get about 25 to 30 miles on this bike just depending on your weight and how you ride if you're going up hills stuff like that. if you're really going up hills then don't expect that type of range but i really feel like you're going to get at least 25 miles if you're like slightly in between 150 to 200 pounds if you're over that you might get less if you just use throttle only but um anyways love you guys true mvps for sticking around to the I end of this video understand. somehow my watch just keeps going off what the heck but uh, now i gotta get my milk inside and i will see you guys in the next one peace out guys yeah